Welcome back to the channel. There's a new paper out now in the journal Vaccine, and it's about the COVID-19 vaccine and some of the harms due to the vaccine. It's the largest observational analysis of 99 million people, and it's entitled COVID-19 Vaccines and Adverse Events of Special Interest, a Multinational Global Vaccine Data Network Cohort Study of 99 Million Individuals. They like to put the 99 million in the title so they can try to get accepted in a good journal, and they actually did this time. And this paper shows very concerning safety signals across a number of domains, including myocarditis, pericarditis, ITP, Guillain-Barre syndrome, Bell's palsy, ADEM, pulmonary embolism, febrile seizures, and more. I'm going to talk about those concerning safety signals seen in this paper, but I want to talk more broadly about what the paper shows and why it is so unnerving, because I think it suggests rather strongly that there were safety signals that have been ignored and underexplored, and that in many populations, particularly young people, particularly people who had already had and recovered of COVID-19, and for many additional doses beyond dose 2+, plus, 3+, plus, 4+, plus, 5+, plus, it is quite likely, in some cases you can easily show, for instance, young men between the ages of 16 and 24, but in other cases it's probably quite likely that the harms outweigh the benefits for vaccination in that age group. And that means that the mandates in those age groups are deeply morally problematic, they're scientifically problematic, and they bankrupt trust in public health. One more bit of background before we be missing people who suffered these complications for a number of reasons. For instance, a lot of people might have had thrombocytopenia at low platelets. Is not the real denominator. The real denominator is all the people who had COVID-19, the vast majority of which, one, didn't even know they had it, two, they felt a little tickle in their throat, they didn't even test themselves, three, they felt sick at home with a cold and they did nothing about it, four, they tested themselves at home but they didn't tell you the test result, and then five, got so sick, so concerned that they sought medical care, and that's the denominator you're focusing on. You're looking at adverse events in a subgroup of people, probably the sickest and probably those at most at risk of these adverse events, and then you're comparing that against vaccination, absolutely brain-dead epidemiology. You need to do a seroprevalence study to actually surveil the population, see how many people actually had COVID, and use that as your real denominator. If you actually cared about doing honest science, which I have not yet seen, we're doing an empirical analysis on this, add more appropriate and harder endpoints and longer follow-up in younger age groups, because I think many people think it's career suicide or taboo, and that is also stifling to science. And so I think, if anything, the problem is worse than what's shown in this paper their risk of bad COVID outcomes after having had two doses was floored, and the risk of myocarditis is probably an order of magnitude greater than the risk of a bad COVID outcome.